In need of great talent for your business but short on time? You don't have to get lost in a huge stack of resumes to find your perfect hire. You just need the right tools. Smarter tools. ZipRecruiter posts your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click. Then ZipRecruiter actively looks for the most qualified candidates and invites them to apply. They even review every application to identify the top candidates so you never miss a great match. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other hiring sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. No wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes and industries to find the most qualified candidates with immediate results. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Stephen A. That's with a PH, not a V. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Stephen A. One more time to try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Stephen A. That's with a PH, not a V. The Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio, 250 plus markets across the United States of America, and of course, nationwide on ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Lots of stuff to get into today. Super Bowl talk, Tom Brady not wanting the reporter to get fired. Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G. That, that is set for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, the sequel to their epic fight just a few months ago. We'll be talking about all of that today, but we have to start with some NBA items. Of course, we'll get into Roger Goodell and his comments about how don't expect to, to not expect the Redskins to change their name or the logo, rather, on their uniforms just because um, the Cleveland Indians decided to do the same. So don't expect the Redskins to change their name just because the Cleveland Indians decided to change their logo. We'll talk about all of that, but the first order of business to get into is the NBA because a trade took place involving the Los Angeles Clippers. Blake Griffin, to be exact, is no longer a member of the Los Angeles Clippers. Blake Griffin is now a member of the Detroit Pistons, courtesy of a blockbuster deal. That sent Tobias Harris and Avery Bradley and a first round pick, a second round pick and another player to the Los Angeles Clippers. Blake Griffin is no longer a member of the Los Angeles Clippers. He is now a member of the Detroit Pistons. And there's a lot of ways to go with this story. There's a lot of ways to go with this story. Evidently, he has no problem with being gone. He's looking forward to competing in the Eastern Conference. I think it makes Detroit better. I think it puts them, it elevates them to a level where Milwaukee, Washington, Indiana, Philadelphia all need to be concerned. Cleveland, Boston, and Toronto don't need to be concerned, but the rest of the Eastern Conference definitely needs to be concerned because the combination of Blake Griffin with Andre Drummond definitely is formidable. Take that into account. Pairing them with Ish Smith and Reggie Jackson and those guys, uh, the Detroit Pistons might be able to make some noise. You just never know. When you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, they're a slower team, big and slow, not incredibly athletic. That's problematic. And that puts a team like the Detroit Pistons in position to compete with them. But the big story here is the effect and the impact that it has on the Los Angeles Clippers. Everybody that I've talked to, that I've spoken to, in NBA circles, swear that the Clippers got the better end of this deal. They say that Blake Griffin was a star, but he was no superstar. They reminded me that they've never gotten to the Western Conference Finals with him, that he's been injury prone, particularly the last two years in the postseason, that Chris Paul is no longer there. And as a result of that, they say, look at what the Clippers have done. Tobias Harris can play. Avery Bradley can play. Bogdanovich can play a first-round pick, a second-round pick. Those are viable assets. My thing is this. Here's the storyline appeal from all of this. What does this do to the future of Doc Rivers? One would surmise his days are numbered. Last year's starting lineup of Chris Paul, J.J. Redick, DeAndre Jordan, 
Luke Mba Amute and Blake Griffin. There's only one starter remaining. That's DeAndre Jordan. Everybody else left. Some left whispering. Others left stomping. But none left with a smile on their face raving about Doc Rivers. You got Matt Barnes, a former player, tweeting out stuff about how everybody knows what's going on in L.A. is Doc Rivers' fault. Now, I'm not somebody that subscribes to that level of thinking. I happen to think that Doc Rivers is a great coach. I don't think that he's a great GM. I think that he took on too much responsibility. Even though I'm fond of Austin Rivers, and I don't believe that Austin Rivers gets the respect that he deserves because he can defend and he's not a scrub, maybe, just maybe, hindsight should tell us Austin Rivers should have never been brought to the Clippers. Because it seems to be the right and proper level of ammunition for folks to bring Doc Rivers in the question. We all know when Steve Ballmer brought on Jerry West, we know what this is about. Y'all can sit up there and think that Jerry West is some consultant all you want to. Jerry West won in the show. If I'm Steve Ballmer and I've got a championship coach in Doc Rivers and a former playoff coach in Lawrence Frank in my organization, not just coaching, but running basketball operations. And I turn on around and I bring in Jerry West. I'm telling you that the job you're doing is not good enough. That's the bottom line. It's the bottom line. Jerry West is a consultant because guess what? He gets to express his mode of thinking. He gets to have an impact and doesn't necessarily have the title that attaches responsibility and culpability to him in the event that things don't work out. That's not an insult to Jerry West, not by a long shot. It actually speaks to his brilliance because when you're 80 years old, why do you need the headache of responsibility? But even though you're older, you certainly don't want to feel like folks are dismissing you and your opinions and thoughts and feelings don't matter. And if you got a billionaire that's telling you they matter, that matters. And that is what we're looking at when it comes to the Jerry West. In the end, what it comes down to is that this does not look like a good situation for Doc Rivers to be in. Because you're not going to win this year. Do I think this deal is bad for the Clippers? Absolutely not. You got multiple players for Blake Griffin who's a star but wasn't a superstar and to some degree was injury prone. I got respect for Blake Griffin. Nobody's trying to disrespect him by any stretch of the imagination. But I think the Clippers get a little better because of this. Because guess what? You're devoid of expectations. You'll probably still be as competitive as you would have been anyway. And you've set the stage and establish some level of foundation for a future. We'll see what Blake Griffin does. And I think Blake Griffin, by the way, is Taylor made for the East. The Western Conference wasn't for him. With San Antonio, with Oklahoma City, with Houston, and with the Golden State Warriors, look, the Clippers, they weren't getting past the first round. Let's just call it what it is. It wasn't happening. So there's no bad move here on the part of the Clippers. If you're Stan Van Gundy who's calling the shots in Detroit, different ball game. Because you need to win a little bit more with Blake Griffin. Who's getting paid $29 million right now? Whose numbers are going to go up to 31 and 34 and beyond after they, after this season? It's going to be real interesting to see what happens. And by the way, it's all about noise in the Eastern Conference. Because guess what? John Wall, it was just announced, is going to miss about two months because of a knee injury and so now you're the wizard you could be in a world of trouble Detroit's on a come up Philly's on a come up Oladipo's balling in Indiana the Greek freak is in Milwaukee and if you're the Washington Wizards you didn't have depth to begin with you were basically a two-headed monster with Wall and Bill and now Wall is out tough times In the nation's capital. It seems to be anyway. But what does that mean for Cleveland? What does that mean for Boston, who won in Denver last night with Kyrie putting on the show? 
What does that mean in the Eastern Conference? Lots of stuff to get into. Number to call up is 888-729-3776. It's 888-SAY-ESPN. We'll also get into Tom Brady making news for non-football related matters through no fault of his own, but still stepping up in a very classy fashion and refusing to con- to endorse the firing of a particular radio host. Not that the host has been fired, but Tom Brady said no. That's not something he wishes upon the guy. I'll explain to you what that's all about. Plus, we'll get into some Super Bowl talk, Patriots, Eagles, lots of stuff to get into there. Tell you where I'm leaning towards, who I'm thinking about picking. All that and more coming up next. Don't touch that dial. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Super Week is here. Don't miss the Stephen A. Smith Show live from Radio Row in Minneapolis, site of Super Bowl 52. It all gets underway tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Straight Talk Wireless Nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on ESPN Radio, presented by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save an average of $620. And I'm going to call up to the show, as always, is 888-729-3776. It's 888-SAY-ESPN. A couple of other items I want to get to before I spoke on the sh- I, um I went to the callers. Tom Brady made news for all the wrong reasons. There was a host on uh, WEEI radio. I think his name is Alex Reamer. Um, he's in his 20s. I don't know who he is. Wouldn't know him if he was standing right in front of me. But nevertheless, with the Tom versus Time documentary that came out, evidently he watched it. And he felt the need to take a shot at Tom Brady's five-year-old daughter. Uh, said something along the line that she looked like a little pissant. That was the word that he used. Tom Brady, who does a weekly appearance in WEEI, called in and basically said it was unfortunate and, you know, and, you know, it was uh, something that was wrong and he doesn't think any child should be talked about that way and he didn't know how he felt about it or whether he'd be back on, but. He cut the interview short because of that reason. Uh, I believe it was on the Kirk, Kirk and Callahan show. The way they said to him, OK, that's that's fine. Where they can they respect where he was coming from. And that was that um, he was talking to the media yesterday. And I don't know if we have that sound, but he was talking to the media yesterday and he was asked uh, what should happen to this individual that said that about his five year old daughter. Uh, and whether or not the guy should be fired. Here was here was Tom Brady's response. I didn't hear much, you know, about it, but I didn't I didn't get into it too much. I just said I certainly hope the guy's not fired. That's I would I would hate for that to happen. I think you know we all have careers and we all you know make mistakes and I mean I'd hate for someone to have to change their life over something like that. That was certainly not what he intended. I completely agree with Tom Brady. I thought that what Mr. Rima did was incredibly distasteful, considering the fact that we're talking about a five-year-old child. But does should he be fired for that? No. Not going to do that. Not going to call for a man to be fired. I don't think anybody in this business or beyond should call for a guy to be fired over something like that. It was wrong. He should have been. He should have apologized. The suspension he's receiving is warranted. All of that's fine, good and dandy, but he shouldn't be fired. I'm talking about people's livelihoods, people's careers. He made a mistake, albeit intentional and distasteful. It was still a mistake. And I think that one would say when you learn, you you have an opportunity uh, to capitalize off a teachable moment and to make sure that you never allow yourself to be place yourself in that position again. I, for the life of me, can't understand why anybody would attack a five-year-old child. You know, talking about him like that, particularly when it's the daughter of this, one of the greatest quarterbacks, if not the greatest quarterback to have ever lived, who happens to be a weekly guest on your station. I don't know what level of intelligence comes with making a decision to do something like that. But I also, as I reiterated yesterday and I reiterated today on First Take this morning, 
You know, it's a hard thing for me because I've been a guest on WEI and I'll never go back. And I don't mind being on the station talking to my boy, Michael Holly. But I'm talking about that particular show. I don't even remember who the guy was when I was called on the air to talk about one subject and it's an excuse to venture into another. And other people have said the same thing about that same station. What this comes down to is that this is sports talk radio. And a lot of times, you know, you can disagree and you can go at it over certain things. But, you know, it's one thing to disagree about things and issues. It's another thing entirely to engage in character assassination. To be completely open and in the interest of full disclosure, when they came at me, it was we were talking about arguing about Tom Brady. And the particular host brought up Mayweather and who am I to talk about Tom Brady because of something I disagree with about Tom Brady when I'm yucking it around on TV with Floyd Money Mayweather. Well, I was working. And, you know, to me, you know, and literally what came out of his mouth was, you know, you know, like I'm condoning domestic violence. So you sit up there, you think about something like that. Excuse me, we had a conversation about Brady and that's where it goes. So I don't want to belabor that. I just don't. I just want to make sure that people recognize that I'm being honest about what my issue with that station was. Brandon Marshall had an issue. Damian Woody had an issue. Other people had issues. Chris Mortensen and others, whatever those issues may be. Great sports town, Boston is, really is. Great radio station, WEEI. A lot of great guys over there that obviously work very, very hard and, and do the job. But a couple of bad apples can mess things up. Because your reputation gets tarnished because you're willing to go there. And why? It's just not necessary. And I'm not saying it to chastise them. Who the hell am I? I'm saying it because you're a damn good radio station. Be that. And don't do stuff to ruin it. Just my opinion. But I completely agree with Tom Grady. I would not fire the guy. I would not fire him. Transitioning to another subject that's worthy of discussion. Roger Goodell went on the record on Wingo and Golick today. Oh, I'm sorry, Golick and Wingo today. And um, the commissioner for the National Football League uh, was asked a question, you know, in regards to just the day after the Cleveland Indians announced they would no longer use Chief Wahoo as a logo after this season. Goodell said he did not see the Washington Redskins nickname changing. Redskins owner Daniel Snyder has remained firm in his desire to keep the nickname. And Goodell said Tuesday on the Golik and Wingo show, I don't see him changing that perspective. Dan Snyder has really worked in the Native American community to understand better their perspective. And I think it's reflected mostly in a Washington Post poll that came out in May of 2016 that said over nine out of 10 Native Americans do not take that in a negative fashion. The Redskins logo or the Redskins name and they support it. This is what Goodell told Golik and Wingo. That's the position. My guy, my buddy on first take Max, Max Kellerman, I believe lost his damn mind as he usually does over this subject. Uh, because not only does he emphatically disagree, not only does he refuse to call the Redskins by their name, he calls them the team from Washington. Uh, but he seems to believe that we're all required to, to sustain and possess a certain level of empathy. And that any of us who disagree with that position lack empathy. Will Kane disagreed with him. I found myself in a rare moment agreeing with Will Kane. And my position is, is, is clear. It's not an issue of empathy here when it comes, uh, to the logos and, and, and anything incendiary towards the Native American community. As a black man, I am highly sensitive to anything that's stereotypical. Or that's pernicious in nature. And it definitely deserves to be addressed and change needs to come. I totally, totally, totally understand that. If you but here's the thing. If you are black and you hear someone spewing the N word that is not black. 
almost in unison, you're going to be offended. You can't find a poll where nine out of 10 blacks don't find the N word offensive emanating out of the mouth of somebody who's not black. So it's sort of a universal understanding. The Jewish community, certain words, certain phraseologies, they're insulting. And you know, and they will make sure you know. And the list goes on and on. The problem with what Roger Goodell brought up is that you can question a poll. You can question numerous polls. But if there's a divide within the Native American community as to what is offensive and what is not. If I'm Daniel Snyder, I'm a white businessman whose franchise is worth billions and changing the name, if I believe is going to compromise me, maybe Stephen A would change it, but I can't blame him if he doesn't want to. Because he's saying I could find just as many folks that are not offended by this. And on top of it all, I'm making money off of this name. Why am I going to give that up? When I got a boatload of folks from the Native American community who would support me. Now, the polls could be bogus for all we know. They could be manufactured for all we know. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm going to attach a level of legitimacy to it because I respect the Washington Post. But I still have to sit up there and think about the fact that Daniel Snyder is not a Native American. He's a white businessman whose franchise is worth billions and he believes that he has documentation validating that this issue that exists within the Native American community is not that big of an issue at all because there are many people who told him it's non-offensive. So devoid of clarification in unison why should he change something that could def that could ultimately compromise his bottom line? I think that's how he's looking at it. And it's hard to villainize him over that. I wouldn't do it. I don't necessarily like it, but it's difficult to villainize him over that. Because the Native American community does not appear to be marching in lockstep with one another as to the definition of what is offensive and what is not offensive to them pertaining to this issue. That's my position. What's yours? 888-729-3776. It's 888-SAY-ESPN. We'll get back to your calls and more in just a minute. But before that, let me say this to you. With all the exciting hype surrounding Valentine's, you probably have some decent gifts ideas swirling around. But you're waiting for the perfect one. Well, 1-800-Flowers.com is your answer. Because right now, when you order early, you can get 12 multicolored roses for only nineteen ninety nine, or double it to 24 multicolored roses for only $10 more. Bouquet prizes will be going up soon, so take advantage today. To order a dozen multicolored roses for nineteen ninety nine, or upgrade to 24 multicolored roses for only $10 more, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, and enter code SAS. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code SAS. Super Week is here. Don't miss the Stephen A. Smith Show live from Radio Row in Minneapolis, site of Super Bowl 52. It all gets underway tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. A lot of people are leaning, believe it or not, towards the Eagles. They look at Nick Foles balling the way that he's balled. They're looking at New England and some of their struggles over the last five or six weeks of the season. They're thinking about Gronk being out, even though he'll be available for the Super Bowl. He was out, had to leave the AFC Championship game earlier due to a concussion. Julian Amendola, uh, Julian Edelman, I'm sorry, has been gone since the preseason, and Danny Amendola showed up and handled his business. But people are wondering whether or not you'll be able to do that against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's something we're looking forward to talking with Teddy Bruschi, former Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots. It's about at 30 minutes past this hour. We also got into the trade that sent Blake Griffin to the Detroit Pistons from the Los Angeles Clippers. We've learned, we revealed the news that John Wall will be out for about the next two months, which I think puts the Washington Wizards in a precarious position. The East is up for grabs because Boston looks better than Cleveland. Yesterday, I asked y'all, who would you rather see in the finals? I'm tired of seeing LeBron lose in the finals. 
I don't want to see LeBron lose a sixth, tie, a sixth NBA Finals. I'd rather him not make it so Boston could be up in there personally. That's what I'd rather see. But that's just me. And, of course, somebody's going to tell us we can't dismiss Toronto. We know we can't dismiss Toronto. Not with the way DeMar DeRozan is playing. So much for him wanting out. For years I'd heard he wanted out in the worst way to end up in L.A. Wanted to make sure he got his money first. But now if you're him, why would you leave? I mean, why? It's all a guess. It's all something to wonder about. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's the number to call up. One of the other things I want to transition to, um, I brought up the uh, Chief Wahoo's uh, logo that the Cleveland Indians and Major League Baseball are going to remove. How that's not going to incite Redskins owner Dan Snyder to um, get rid of uh, the Redskins name. How abhorrent some people find that. How others don't seem to care at all. Those are all things to consider, no doubt. We talked about that. We also talked about Tom Brady not wanting the reporter that called his five-year-old daughter, the radio host, rather, that called his five-year-old daughter, you know, a little pissant. He didn't want him fired. Classy move by Tom Brady. Agreed with that. But the other thing I wanted to get into was this. There's a fight, Cinco de Mayo, in May. The sequel to Triple G versus Canelo Alvarez. They're going to fight again. And I got to tell you something. Unlike before, I'm considerably more worried for Triple G in this one. Triple G, Triple G, Kazakhstan. I mean, heavy puncher can definitely take a punch. We know he can fight, et cetera, et cetera. We get all of that. But Canelo Alvarez is something special, y'all. And what continues to jump out in my mind more than anything else, more than anything else, based off of that fight, is how, how often Triple G missed. See, to me, Canelo could go back to the to the gym and make the necessary and requisite adjustments. He could do that. He could go back and make the necessary adjustments in terms of getting inside or getting outside quicker and all of this other stuff. He can do all of that. To me, if you're Triple G, you are what you are because he's so slow compared to Canelo. I just don't know. I picked Triple G to win that fight. I thought he won that fight. I really, really did. Shouldn't have been no damn draw. But I will tell you this. I think he'd win the rematch by decision, hopefully. I wouldn't like seeing my man Triple G get knocked out personally. But I don't want, I don't think they're going to win. I really, really don't. I don't think Triple G's going to beat Canelo Alvarez in the second go round. And, and just for the record, let me say this. Canelo Alvarez is a monster. That's a compliment. You see the size of that man's neck? I mean, when this man knocked out James Kirkland, when he knocked this man out, I mean, do you ever realize we still haven't spotted James Kirkland anywhere? You haven't seen him in a mall. You haven't seen him walking into a 7-Eleven. You haven't seen him walking into a deli. No way. We can't find him anywhere. After the knockout, he suffered at the hands of Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez is a monster. And I'm here to tell y'all right now, his counter-punching ability, the power he packs in both punches, the bad intentions with which he swings, plus his ability to take a punch. Can, I, all these welterweights, don't you move up to fight him. Don't you, you, you Terrence Crawford, you stay, you, you go, you moving up to 147. Stay there. You keep, you know, Keith Thurman and Sean Porter and, 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 and Danny Garcia and all, you, you stay the hell away from, from Canelo. Don't you move up to fight that man. Don't you do it. I'm a Danny, I'm a Danny Jacobs fan. I'm proud of what he's overcome with the cancer and everything. Great story for the valiant fight against Triple G. Don't go, don't you go near Canelo. I don't like it. Canelo's a monster, man. He's a monster. Floyd Mayweather, don't you come out of retirement and fight no Canelo Alvarez. Don't you do it. And he schooled Canelo. Gave him a boxing lesson. But don't you go near that man now. He was Roy Green then. You stay away from him. And we talk about Floyd versus Conor McGregor. And what would Canelo have done? Listen, let me tell y'all something right now. Floyd barely trained for that fight. 
If Canelo Alvarez was in a in a ring in a boxing ring with Conor McGregor, Canelo Alvarez would take Conor McGregor out inside of two rounds. Inside of two rounds. Canelo is something special, y'all. You don't see this stuff every day. This brother is special. And I thought Triple G won the first fight. Don't get me wrong. Triple G's ability to take a punch is is something to behold. And we all know he can give it. But I'm telling y'all right now, I've been watching boxing all my life. Canelo Alvarez, stay away from him. I don't want to sound like the trainer in Rocky who was screaming when Apollo Creed got knocked out by Drago, got killed by Drago, when he was training Rocky to go against Drago, when he was training Apollo Creed to go against Rocky in fights one and two. Stay away from him like crying. Stay away from him. That's right. That's what I'm doing with Canelo. To, To all of these people, stay away from that man. He is something special. Oscar got a great one in this man. And I think he'd win the rematch. I really do. Hopefully by decision, because I don't want to see my man Triple G get knocked out. But my Lord, when Canelo hits you and he misses, the wind hurts you. It's like, oh, 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 God. Uh, That's how you feel. He's something special, y'all. He's something special. Cinco de Mayo, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. It's official, y'all. Needless to say, Lord willing, I will most definitely be there. 888 say ESPN. That is the number to call up. Back to your calls in a minute. In a minute, you're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. By the way, Dollar Shave Club not only gives you an amazing shave, but they also make products for your hair, face, skin, shower, everything you need. And it's all their own original stuff. Dollar Shave Club has you covered head to toe. And right now, you can get your first month of their best razor, along with travel size versions of shave butter, body cleanser, and yes, even butt wipes. That's right, I said it, butt wipes. For just $5. After that, replacement cartridges ship for just a few bucks a month. It's the DSC starter set for just $5. Exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash Stephen A. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash Stephen A. That's with a PH, not a V. Craving even more of Stephen A? Him of all people! For around-the-clock access to the man? I'm Stephen A! You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at Stephen A. Smith and on Facebook at Stephen A. 1-800-Flowers.com has the Valentine's gift she'll love. Right now, you can get 12 multicolored roses for only $19.99. Or double it to 24 multicolored roses for only $10 more. To order... Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. <laughs> no, I am not Barry White. I was just putting my Barry White voice right there. A little Barry White, Marvin Gaye kind of thing. That's all. Just play it around. Just play it around. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Back to the phones we go. Let's go to Chris in North Carolina. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Talk to me. Stephen A., uh... I got a funny feeling about this Redskins thing. Yep. Uh, for, for most of America's history, uh, the black community had no voice. And mm-hmm. white guys like me made all the decisions for them. And now you've got this rich white guy of a leader of a billion dollar multinational, mm-hmm. you know, industry or organization. Uh, seems like he's, he's the voice for, for a community that doesn't really have a voice. Stop right and, uh, there. And, and all- Stop. What, what do you mean? He's the voice for a community that doesn't have a voice. I don't think the Native American community has a voice. I really don't. Okay. And to, to, to indicate that they do have a voice by by citing a poll of 500 people, 500, it's like a billion dollar organization. Well, stop right there. Stop right, stop, right, stop, right, stop right there. Number one, there's been multiple polls. Number two, Daniel Snyder is not speaking for the Native American community. What Daniel Snyder is saying is, the Native American community isn't marched lockstep in unison against his position. And the issue is not what's going on in the Native American community. The issue is 
whether or not Daniel Snyder is willing to change the name of a franchise he owns. So let's understand that just because a lot of us find it offensive and think that the name should be changed, that one issue does not define the Native American community. There is an owner who happens to be a billionaire who happens to be white that doesn't want to change the name. Now, whether we agree or disagree with it, that's not being the voice of the Native American community. That's his, that's his position. But and respectfully, his spokes puppet, Roger Goodell, uh, cited the reason, one of the reasons that they're okay with the, st- the, the name change being the same is he actually cited a poll. Well, let me stop right that, there. Let me stop right there. I, I, we don't have to guess, my, bro- my man, I covered this. I am telling you that absolutely Raj Goodell cited the poll, but he's citing the poll to let you know that one of his bosses is going to use that as rationale to refuse to change the name. And it's his franchise. He owns the Redskins. Agreed. He, own, he owns the so, but- but wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are you calling me about the Redskins? Why haven't you called about the Atlanta Braves? Why haven't you called about the Florida State Seminoles? Why haven't you called about things like that? Why is it well, all about the Redskins? Because it was a hot topic today. We could have this but, conversation about any of those organizations if they happen to be the topic discussed on your show today. Fair enough. That's why I, that's why I mentioned the Redskins. Fair, fair, fair enough. I'm just saying to you, the man owns the Redskins. Whether you agree or disagree, that's not speaking on behalf of the Native American community. He's speaking on behalf of himself and why he refuses to change the name of a franchise he owns. That's entirely different than speaking for the Native American community, sir. That's all I'm saying. I got you. I, I just think when you cite a poll as evidence in support of your decision, I. Now your signal went out, Chris, but I get your point. Now I understand. I understand. You're citing the poll as evidence. So that speaks, that gives representation of the Native American community, which is relatively inaccurate because it's only 500 people that you polled. I understand. No problem. Let's go to Mike in Montana. You're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Good afternoon, Mike. How are you? Hey, Stephen A. I just got one thing to say about using the word Redskin to begin with. Uh, you know, Grant, it's his organization. He can do what he wants, I guess. But I'm, I'd like to see somebody who thinks using that word go up to any native person and call them that and see how it ends well i believe in that point well let me tell you this i've had native americans tell me it it wasn't offensive whereas i've had a lot more who said it was but you can't find a black person that hears the n-word from someone outside the black community that that does not that's not gonna find it offensive so i do get your point more than you realize but they're going to argue with you. There's plenty of Native Americans that don't find it offensive. Wow. And by the way, they're right because they, they some of these Native Americans have spoken publicly about how they didn't find it offensive. Now, I don't think the number is large enough to justify Daniel Snyder's unwillingness to make change. But there are those who speak up and say, no, we don't find it offensive. I, I agree. I have friends from the Crow tribe. That's their favorite team. You know, okay. and I ask him, well, would that be okay if I came up to you and called you that name? And that made them think, well, I don't know about that. You know, so I don't know. But my daughter did have a, a way of fixing it. He just changes his mascot to a potato. He can keep the name Redskin then. Got Thanks you. for taking my call. Appreciate it. No problem. Let's go to Paul in Connecticut. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Stephen A., man. How you doing? I'm good. Talk to me. I was uh, hearing you talk about Triple G, Canelo, um, McGregor. I, I just, you know, I, I agree Canelo's a great fighter, but I, I just think that if he's dropping McGregor in two rounds, I, I'm thinking I'm thinking Triple G is doing it in one. Well, here's the thing. You know better than this. You tried to be slick. So I'm going to get on you, Paul. Styles make fights. Canelo's a great counterpuncher. You know, who's capable of walking through most. Triple G is not only capable, he actually makes a living out of walking through folks. So the reason why Triple G would take him out sooner is because he's bigger and stronger than Canelo, 
but also because he'd waste no time marching right to Conor McGregor. Whereas Canelo might wait a little bit. Well, give or take a minute. Think, give or take a minute. De La Hoya had a referee in his pocket, man. There's no way Triple G lost that first fight. Well, I, I agree with you. I thought, I thought, I don't, I'm not going to agree with you about having a referee in his pocket, but I will agree with you that uh, Triple G definitely won the first fight. Definitely should have been awarded the first fight. It was a travesty that he missed out on the first fight. No doubt about it. Appreciate the call, Matt in the Bronx. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Good afternoon, Stephen A. I uh, love the show, and I always respect your many opinions, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, um, however, I'm quite disappointed, you know, your views on the Redskins chain, um, mm -hmm. name change. Um, I get the whole business element and, you know, the owner and money and um, et cetera, but, you know, this isn't a hypersensitivity. You, you know, this is a word with a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Redskins were enslaved. I mean, look at what transpired with the Trail of Tears. I mean, et cetera, et cetera. Matt, we lost your signal. Let me explain something to you anyway, though. You are entitled to your opinion. I understand. I don't give a damn what anybody feels about mine. All I can do is tell you where I stand. I did not take a definitive position in favor of Daniel Snyder against the Native American community. I simply pointed out the fact that by not being marched lockstep in unison, against Daniel Snyder, it strengthens and validates his opposition to a name change for a franchise that he owns that is worth billions of dollars. If I'm Daniel Snyder and I believe that there are Native Americans that disagree with other Native Americans who find the name Redskins to be offensive, and I believe the name change is going to cost me billions of dollars. Stephen A. Smith will make the change because I got a good soul. And what matters to me is that anyone there finds it offensive. That's good enough for me. But if I'm Daniel Snyder, who's a billionaire, businessman, who happens to be white, and a lot of times they're in those positions because they're merciless. I don't give a damn about that. I'm going to keep that name because I ain't trying to compromise my brand and my bottom line. That's what he's doing. And it ain't about right and wrong sometimes. Sometimes it's about reality. The reality is, is that it's about the dollars for Daniel Snyder. It ain't about offending or not, not offending anybody. It's about dollars and cents. Now that damn sure don't make him right. But if you want to make him wrong, it will behoove you if you're the Native American community to march lockstep in unison with one another because it validates and buffers your case even more rather than coming across as a divided front, thereby giving Daniel Snyder more ammunition to say, see, it's not offensive. They're just tripping. That's all I'm saying. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.